Hello everyone and welcome back to PhD and Productivity. If you're new here, my name is Kira, and I'm a first year computer science PhD student in Ireland. I've made this channel as a way to explain my process throughout the PhD as well as give tips for productivity and staying organised. Especially at the moment when a lot of people are working from home, I hope that all of this content will be very useful for you guys. This video is going to be sort of a six month update of my PhD as well as an insight into what I'm going to be working on during the social distancing, self-isolation kind of period so that you might get some ideas of what you should be working on as well. And I just wanted to take some time to thank everyone who has supported my channel so far by liking or commenting on videos as well as subscribing to the channel. The point of this channel is to be helpful for you guys and to use this as a platform to perform scientific communication and that's how I'm sort of working on my scientific communication or public speaking skill. So I'm really glad that a lot of people have been able to gain something from this channel and have been subscribing. So thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed so far. And if you are new here and are looking for this kind of content and enjoy this video, then be sure to subscribe and check out some of my other videos as well. So first to start off with how the first six months of my PhD have been going. So my PhD is in machine learning, specifically in computer science. And our program is a bit different because it started off with a six week boot camp, which started at the beginning of October. And at this point, none of us had supervisors or projects that we were specifically going to be working on. And during this time, we got to meet a lot of different supervisors across three different universities in Ireland and were able to discuss different interests with these supervisors before settling on a specific supervisor and project. So the first six weeks, you know, we were able to talk to the different supervisors as well as learn a lot about machine learning. It kind of was a good time for everyone to get up to scratch because people in the course came from different backgrounds such as maths and statistics, computer science and engineering and other disciplines. So it was a good time for everyone to get up to the same level with programming, machine learning and statistics. So that's what the first six weeks was all about. As well during this time we also took part in a group project activity where we had to identify a social issue and come up with a solution using machine learning methods. So that was also a good experience because we were working together in teams and getting to know each other a bit better. We also were, you know, learning a bit about entrepreneurship and we had a workshop in entrepreneurship as well. So that was a good way to get started with that transferable skill. We also had a couple of pitch days, one of which was with industry partners, which was really good for career management because we were making some connections with different industry partners and it was a good way to get our names out there. So even just that one project really gave us a few different transferable skills already to work with. So that being teamwork, leadership, public speaking, entrepreneurship and innovation and career management. So a ton of different transferable skills already met with that. As well, we did have some other workshops throughout the program, such as scientific communication and public speaking, research methods in general and ethics and GDPR as well. So all of these workshops contributed to the research transferable skill that we'll all want to be developing throughout the course of your PhD. So if you're a bit unsure about what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the transferable skills or the soft skills, I have a video about the different transferable skills you'll want to be developing throughout your PhD. So if you want to check that out, I'll have it linked for you down below. And the way that I personally track the development of my transferable skills is in my A4 bullet journal. And I have this here, which I have shown in a previous video as well of like how I'm tracking and working on these skills. So I'll have the video that goes into this in a bit more depth in the links down below as well, just so that you can look at that if you want to. But even just the bootcamp, the first six weeks got me at least to the first level for each of these skills. So I kind of think that's worthwhile, even obviously most programs don't have this kind of structure, but it would be worthwhile for you to actually take the time and go through a workshop online and some of the different things that I've mentioned and try and get your transferable skills up to level one in the first couple of months because that will get the ball rolling with each of these skills and it will make you understand which ones you need to work on and stuff like that. So that was the first six weeks anyways and then after that I had met my actual supervisor and understand which project I would be working on. So the next sort of four to six weeks was understanding where the field was at this current time 
and coming up with the research proposal, which I know that a lot of people will have actually submitted their research proposal prior. I read some of the main papers in my field and was familiarizing myself with the literature and who the main sort of players in the field were, who the main authors were. So that's a good thing to do near the beginning of your PhD so that you understand what kind of literature is important and start developing your literature survey. Other things that I did in the sort of four to six week period after the boot camp, which was before Christmas, was to put together a plan for the credits I was going to be completing and enrolled myself for the courses that would be starting in January. So those classes that I'm doing at the moment are academic writing as well as software development. So that's something that I did during that time as well. And I met with my supervisors a couple of times to discuss different things like that, such as which classes I should be doing and things like that. As well, I also completed my research integrity training, which is mandatory for my university, but it might not be for yours. But it is worth looking into anyways, because I do think doing a course in research integrity is worthwhile. It is, a lot of it is fairly common sense, but there might be one or two things that you haven't heard of before. So it would definitely be worthwhile doing something like that, as well as the ones I mentioned, so, such as ethics and GDPR, if you're working with data as well. Those are going to be really important things for you to be aware of in any kind of research discipline. Then for the three months after the sort of beginning three months, this is kind of where I really feel like I started to work on my PhD. So I developed my content creation and social media skill by developing this YouTube channel mainly in January and after that. I also started working on my teaching transferable skill because I started to do demonstration hours, which for computer science classes in my university, we have labs where students work independently on their lab work and if they have any problems they'll raise a hand and ask for some help. So I would be one of the people helping in these labs and for some people that is mandatory but for me it's optional but I still choose to do it because it is really good to develop that teaching skill and the sort of interpersonal skills that are good for doing a PhD. Obviously I have also started my classes in academic writing and software development so for the academic writing class which I suppose is more understandable to everybody what we've done so far is write the abstract and begin writing the literature review of the pieces which only being six months into the PhD is a great place to be already. I personally would like to finish my PhD in three, three and a half years. So getting to this point already is really great for me and I'm really happy with the development of my writing so far as I've been getting really good feedback. So I do recommend if you have the opportunity to do an academic writing class, it's really good to get that feedback and improve your writing skills and just understand where you need to work on for your writing. As well, during this time, I worked on and submitted my first conference paper for the PhD that is directly on my research topic and you know working with my supervisors on this paper was such a great experience and I am the first author so having a paper for a very reputable conference now hopefully it will get in but having something like that written already is a very motivating thing to have done and I'm really happy to have this achievement so early on in my PhD and I do recommend rather than getting too bogged down with reading everything at the beginning of your PhD that you actually will take the time to try and write something near the beginning so that you feel like you have one of those wins early on because I feel really good about it. Lastly, I've also been learning a ton about productivity during this time. As many of you might know, if you've seen some of my other videos, I do like talking about it and learning different things and reading different books about productivity. So again, if you would like to see videos like that, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when those videos are uploaded. But that's pretty much everything that I've done so far in the six months. And I'm really happy with my progress so far and so are my supervisors. And then in terms of what's coming next, so obviously at the moment I'm working from home and many people are as well. And I think what would be a good thing to work on during this time is my reading and writing. So I'm going to be doing the bulk of my literature review during this time and trying to get that chapter somewhat tucked away for the moment. Obviously it will be developed more and more the more that the PhD goes on but having the beginning part of it done and getting to that place I think over the next couple of months will be really good. I also plan on writing another chapter of my PhD based on the research that I've already done in the last three months because that's already a significant 
piece of work that's been done and will have impact. So even though that will likely continue to develop over the couple of years, as we work on this same area of the PhD more, what's been done so far will always be relevant to the field. So writing a chapter about that will be great as well. And how I'm keeping track of that is by using the things that I've shown before, which I'll just insert some clips in here of what my bullet journal looked like before I started filling them out. So basically having the space to keep track of papers that I've been reading and ones that I should continue to read, as well as having the literature review sort of base template for starting to fill in some of the main points. And then once I've gotten to this place where I have more and more information, which is kind of where I'm at right now, I've moved on to a numbers template that is a spreadsheet of the literature review so far. And once I've gotten to a place with that that I feel like I have enough that I can start writing, that's when I'll start writing the literature review chapter as well. Although I have already developed some of it for my academic writing class. So that's what I'm doing with the literature review at the moment. And apart from that, I will also continue to work on the research I have been doing so far and trying out some different things and seeing can I develop it further. And I'm also working on a app at the moment that is for data collection for a future project in the PhD. So that's something that we would like to get up and running in the next couple of months so that we can start collecting data for the next area of research. So those are the main things that I'll be working on. And I'm really interested to know what you guys are working on during this period and how you're finding working from home and trying to stay organised. And if you have any suggestions for videos that you would like to see, let me know in the comments below. I am able to produce more content than normal because I'm not really commuting to and from my university anymore. And that is it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video.